My name is Cameron Doyle and I am the Chief Operating Officer at Nyorsi Wildlife Reserve. Nyorsi Wildlife Reserve, we are the new kids on the block in the Eastern Cape. Uh, we're about a year and a half old. We are a game reserve based within two cities, which means we are a peri-urban game reserve, one of maybe five in the world. Um, as far as we know, we are the only one with elephants. Um, and we are now the closest elephants to the PE airport uh, besides Addo. So, you know, it's something new, it's something unique, it's something that people have not really experienced on a scale in South Africa yet, and it's something that we're trying to get out there for people to experience. It's literally a safari on your doorstep. That's one of our catchphrases, and um, it really is. It's 10 minutes from the Bay West Mall, for those of you guys who know PE, Kabecha, and it's about half an hour from the airport. So. You know, for a half day out, for a quick drive with the kids, you can be here quickly, you can have lunch. Guided game drives, indigenous plant walks, we have picnics, we have wine tasting, we've got our own vineyard on site, uh, which is also quite unique for the Eastern Cape. Um, we have lunch menu, and of course we have various accommodation offers right on your doorstep. So whether it's a weekend away or a week away with the kids, we really do have everything for someone. Um, we've got events we're trying to push now as well. We've got unique bush dinners. And being the new kids on the block, luckily we can be quite flexible. We haven't created a history of, of trying to please people in a certain way. So we really do pride ourselves on being able to provide whatever it is that the client is looking for. So please guys, come and join us for a safari on your doorstep. Hey, my girl. <laughs> Zena, and she's seen us. Hey, my girlie. Do you see her? Yep. So you can see the cubs on the top. She's just on the left of the pole, just with her head popping up there. Yeah, so this is her in her den site. I'm surprised we didn't see the cubs uh, when we drove in. Yeah. They're obviously all lying down. Yeah, so this is her kind of safe area. So we don't generally walk up to her at this point. Um, so normally, the kind of the closest I'll go is around these bushes in front, because she uses this area at the back as her complete safe zone. Um, so she'll, this is where she feels comfortable. And if she wants to bring the cubs to us, then she will. Um, if she doesn't, then she'll stay in that corner and we don't want to push her out. How's it guys? Welcome here to Nyosi. We are in the cheetah enclosure with um, our head guide, Brett. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So I'm just going to quickly create that. So um, I'm actually the senior guide of the reserve, but I'm also the, the wildlife coordinator and the manager of uh, Inkanyiso and the enclosure. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Brett is just going to tell us exactly what they are doing here uh, with the cheetahs. And um, yeah, let's see what he has to say. All right, so just a bit of background about the, the story of Inka Niso, which is our female cheetah, um, who you'll see during hopefully some snippets here. Um, insert. <laughs> <laughs> insert clip. Um, but yeah, just a bit of story and a bit of background about her. Um, so on the 1st of April this year, actually, I'll go back even to last year. So last year, um, Inka Nyiso came to us from a, a, a fully captive environment up in Hoodsprate. And she was brought down here because of her pure genetics. She, is a, she has been taught how to be a completely rewilded cat. So effectively, she has gone from being fully captive to hunting for herself, being self-sustaining out in nature. And unfortunately, at the start of this year, 
uh, actually to be exact, the 1st of April 2024. Um, she actually ended up coming out of the One Valley with a broken leg. Um, now at the time we didn't 100% know it was broken, but uh, we actually, we darted her that afternoon, put her in this enclosure, which we are currently in right now. And so we had to get a portable x-ray machine out and uh, it took about three days. Once we got the x-ray machine out, we had our vet come out to dart her again, just to, to do these x-rays on her leg. And in that process, the vet rolled her over and discovered that she was not only lactating, but she actually had suckle marks on her, on, you know, on those nipples as well. And so we very quickly realized like, okay, there's a problem now, you know, we know there's cubs on the property somewhere. We have no idea how old these cubs are. We, do, we don't even know where they are. We know nothing. And um, thankfully over the course of the past six months, I've been tracking her quite a bit. Um, and in that process, I learned one of her key habits was that she never pinged on a GPS locator twice in the same month. And so in that process, uh, the past month or the month of March, I noticed that she pinged twice in the exact same location. And uh, that to me was very skeptical, but I didn't know why at the time. And as soon as we discovered that she had suckle marks, I very quickly realized, hey, I think I know where these, these cubs are and I have this gut feeling that that's exactly where they are. Um, as I was walking through that valley, um, I realized very quickly that uh, if I'm going to find them, it's going to be a needle in a haystack because the fane horse is about my chest height um, and it's a massive ravine at the bottom and then steep cliffs on the side. So I was looking for any kind of track or sign or anything that would lead me to where Inca Niso came out of that valley. Uh, so I was looking for any kind of sign that she was around uh, while using my GPS um, on my phone and my Google Maps to mark or to follow the GPS coordinates of that last ping. And uh, in that process, I realized that uh, at the bottom of a ravine, there was one beautiful little female cheetah track, um, which was in Caniso's track, and uh, just one, one singular track, and I looked up to my right hand side, and I looked at my phone, and all of them kind of corresponded, where it said that the, the GPS coordinate was actually about seven or eight meters to my right, uh, which would have been up a 20 meter slope. As I scaled the slope, um, it's literally as I say near vertical, I get up to the top, I pull myself up, and as I pull myself up, there's four little three-week-old cheetah cubs standing about three meters away from me, hissing away, you know, trying to protect their little den site at the same time. You know, they, they're three-week-old cheetah cubs that are maybe 10, centi 10, 12 centimeters tall at the time. Very, very small cats. So, yeah, I was waiting patiently. I waited for about 10 minutes. Eventually, they got there and uh, ran, they kind of directed everyone to where the cubs were. Uh, had to direct them, you know, into the valley. And as we got through the valley, the, lo and behold, the four cubs were still there and they absolutely scattered as soon as they saw all of the rescue party. Um, and slowly but surely, we, we had about an hour that we had before sunset. And so in that hour, we slowly but surely caught all of them. And we actually caught the last one uh, pretty much under torchlight uh, or phone torchlight to be exact. We were, it was, yeah, almost couldn't see, couldn't see five, six meters in front of you. And so managed to catch all four with blankets that we use still to this day here at Inyosi as some of our guest blankets, which is really, really cool, really special for the guests. Um, they have been washed. <laughs> um, and in that process, you know, the having caught them, we then returned them back to, the, or brought them back to the enclosure. And at this point, it was not completely dark. Uh, so we brought them into the enclosure. Inca Nyuso had been woken up already. Um, and so she was kind of active and, you know, the whole, the past three days, she or the, those past three days, she was actually very vocal the whole time. And when she realized that her cubs were around the enclosure, she went instantly dead quiet. And so when I walked in and I couldn't see three meters in front of me, it was quite eerie knowing that uh, there's, you know, there could be a, fe a very grumpy female cheetah, a female or a mommy cheetah, should I say, that is within three meters of me and I can't see her. And so I walked in with my phone torch holding a cub, uh, walking in and uh, we put the cubs down. And uh, as I'm backing away from the cubs, I lift my phone torch up and there's Inca Niso literally about three and a half meters away from me, uh, just watching me put her cubs on the floor. Uh, we then left her overnight, um, overnight and we left her the next day just so that she can get acquainted with the cubs again, having not seen them for three days. Uh, she then proceeded to have two operations um, to repair her broken leg. And so we, we noticed that her, one of her screws uh, came out of her plate, which was holding her, bro her bones in place. 
and so the screw came out and actually ended up really affecting her movement so she had to have a second operation uh, where the screw was replaced into the plate and holding her her front right leg in place and uh, ever since then she's actually been walking beautifully um, and she's she's definitely on the heel which is incredible and we expect her to be fully up and running again about eight months after the, the after the operations so you know roughly what's at about the start of you know end of November around there somewhere uh, is kind of the hope but at the end of the day with the four cubs keeping her on her toes you just never know um, they are their little terrorists <laughs>